Hey, this is Shane. Thanks for listening to either the podcast version of the show or if you're listening on Krypton Radio. Either way, just wanted to give you a quick heads up. This show you're about to listen to was recorded live on site uh, using remote equipment at SpaCon in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And for the first portion of the show, there's a little bit of audio distortion due to how close uh, the microphone was uh, to me speaking and and the settings. It, It clears up after the first break. Uh, and, and the show is not unlistenable by any means. Just wanted to give you a heads up if you're like, hey, what's that that noise? Also wanted to give you a heads up. Make sure to um, listen to the whole show because in the uh, second part, uh, after actually after the second break, I have an interview with both Michael Hogan of the Battlestar Galactica remake. He played Colonel Ty and Richard Hatch, who played Commander Apollo in the first Battlestar Galactica from 1978, and then also he played Tom Zarek in the Battlestar Galactica remake, and they're both very cool. So thanks for listening, and uh, on with the show. Shall we play a game? Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Hot Springs, Arkansas, it's Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. I'm live on scene at the inaugural inaugural SpaCon in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and it is already great. Uh, if you're listening and you're on the fence about coming up to SpaCon, coming up to Hot Springs Convention Center today or tomorrow, or both to check out uh, all the action, it is a comic book sci-fi uh cosplay anime gaming convention great exhibitors lots of good stuff going on i'm very very impressed and this was put on in conjunction with the uh, garland county uh library and also uh uh the city of hot springs and it's 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 really good i've talked to michael hogan from battlestar galactica the relaunch i see richard hatch right now uh, from the original Battlestar Galactica and the, uh, the Battlestar Galactica reboot. Uh, he'll be on the show at 1.30. Richard Hatch is coming on at 1.30 for a live interview, so make sure to stay tuned for that. We're going to do our uh, show notes, and, and then we're going to talk to Brent from the Garland County Library. Uh, but let me let me get things going right, right here. Um, first of all, don't forget this is live uh, Geek Talk Radio. Uh, so you can call in at 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. Uh, you're welcome to participate at any moment uh, during the show. Also, this show uh, does have show notes. Now, there's not as many show notes today because I don't have a lot of news items or anything. But if you want to know more about SpawCon or our guests or any of that, then uh, you can go to ShanePlays.com, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S.com, and check out the um, check out the show notes. Uh, and then also the show does go out as a podcast uh, a couple of days, two or three days usually after the live show. I'm looking at Richard Hatch right now, the man, the Apollo, my Apollo right now. And he's going to be on the show at 1.30, really looking forward to it. So, uh, But uh, anyway, um, the show does go out as a podcast within a few days on our on our on the blog at shameplays.com. And it go out on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and more. And we're also carried on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi, kryptonradio.com. Uh, and we always run a week delayed on Krypton Radio. So I'm um, going to talk to Brent real quick uh, from uh, the Garland County Library System, uh, who's who's a co-sponsor of this con. So And, and I hear that Brent is also a big uh, comic book guy. So hold on. Brent, how are you doing today? I'm great. This is excellent. It's really good, isn't it? I mean, how we're, we're sitting there watching uh, Michael Hogan and Richard Hatch just chat while we're doing the show. Yeah, we get to kind of fanboy out right here while we get to have fun and work. And it's, um, it's for the first year, I could not be happier. No, it's amazing. It's really, really good. Good foot, good, uh, foot traffic. Uh, a lot of people. I'll tell you when I knew that you were good because it was your inaugural one was when I pulled in the parking lot and there was a lot of cosplay already. And that's usually a good indication that you've got a lot of interest in your con. Yeah, and, you know, they showed up. Uh, all the cosplayers are so great. They showed up early, uh, and they're ready for the cosplay party tonight. And um, and it's just so cool. Every couple of steps that you take, you run into an awesome costume. There's some really good cosplay. Now, what, t- what time and where is that cosplay party tonight? That, that starts at, I believe, 8 o'clock in the uh, Horner Hall here. 
And uh, just for uh, I'm Shane plays is actually sponsoring the gaming role playing gaming, the other gaming here, and that's in room 208, uh, 207 and 208 here. Uh, is sponsored. I was, you know, fortunate to work with SpaCon as a sponsor. I promoted them, and and you guys are promoting me. And uh, so the the role playing gaming and all that is is sponsored by Shane Plays, actually. So, all right, Mr. Comics guy, <laughs> what what are you reading right now? I uh, I actually just finished the Death of the Family series with Batman, uh, and right now I'm kind of in between. I trying to pick up a new series. They're going to reboot Civil War, and I'm kind of interested in that. So that's the one that I'm going after. You're talking about Civil War Two? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually not reading Marvel right now. I've kind of dropped them for the moment uh, for various reasons I won't go into. But I'm reading the heck out of DC Rebirth, which has actually been surprisingly good. And I've also been picking, picking up more quote-unquote independence. And I've been really surprised by IDW. Do you read any IDW I stuff? Uh, a lot of the independents are coming up, and I think that with the availability online and things like that, or you can go and – to these comic stores are picking up other independents, not just Marvel and DC, the big, the big two, and it's a, it's a great time to be a comic book nerd. It really is. There's some good stuff out there, but I was, you know, really surprised to find uh, a lot. Like I'm reading uh, Transformers uh, by IDW right now, some of their Star Trek stuff, and uh, I've just been, I've just been in ROM and a lot of the Revolution stuff that's going on. But Rebirth has, I went into Rebirth really cynical. And it's been really good. Have you read any of the Rebirth yet? I have, uh, and I was really happy because I was disappointed in the new 52 and everything. A lot of people were, Brent. A lot of people were. Yeah, a lot of people were. So to actually, this is one of the reboots, and usually I say, oh, not, don't reboot it too fast. This is one of the reboots that I am actually proud, you know, yeah. happy with. Well, they've done a good job ca capturing, I don't know, a good feeling in comic books again and getting back to relationships. Now tell us a little bit about the Garland County Library. Uh is it is it a system of libraries? Is it or is it, you know what 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 if people haven't checked out the library, why should they? Oh yeah, uh, we're not a system. We're one library here on Malvern, fourteen twenty seven here in Hot Springs. Um, this library we have something for everyone. It's not just books and librarians shushing you. You know we have from Blu-rays to DVDs, and now on our online services we have things like Hoopla uh, and HooplaDigital.com. All you need is a library card, and it has tons of comics and stuff for the classics. You can catch up on. You can come back uh, to the newer stuff. These are digital versions, or they're yeah, digital versions and uh, digital checkouts. All you need with a uh, library card, but we also have uh, subscriptions to all the newer ones in our uh, magazine section. Right. Well, that's, I'll tell you uh, what, what I've done a lot with, um, with the library system. I, get, I still use it for books, oh, yeah. uh, but I, I do it a lot for graphic novels so I can catch up on, you, you know, you'll, you'll be two or three months behind or whatever, but you can stay current on a lot of the comic books that are out there, movies, yeah. uh, audio books. Yeah. Uh, and I, I didn't even know about the digital comics. So it's, I mean, uh, is, is it sort of like comicsology, but through the library system? Yeah, it, it's kind of, uh, it kind of is. It, we have Hoopla is not just for comics. It has a television series, music, audiobooks, things like that. But their comic section, you just uh, check it out, digital checkout, and it, you can read it panel to panel or full page to full page. And um, it's it's wonderful. I I use it uh, all the time right now. I. I already have a copy, but I uh, downloaded the digital copy of Killing Joke just to read it over the weekend. Now, did you see the new animated Killing Joke? Have you watched that yet? I, I did. Um, I was kind of disappointed in it. I, yeah, we, we did, I did a whole show on it. It had some good parts, but for what Killing Joke is in the history of comics, I was a little disappointed with the with the animated version. But anyway, I don't want I don't. I want to be positive. Yeah, we're we're here to be positive for Spock on. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm a big library supporter. Uh, if people out there are listening and they haven't gone to the library lately, go check it out. It's probably a different experience than you remember. And also, now, do y'all have a, a computer lab people can use? Yeah, we have we have about uh, twelve computers, and you know, uh, it's. We even have a booth here for our cosplay club, and you know. Wait, 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 wait! Your library has a cosplay club. Yeah, and uh, we have uh, different uh, cosplayers and some known cosplayers come in. They teach the kids how to like tips and tricks, how to get around, not spending a lot of money, and it's really supportive. And we go over it about once a month or twice a month with the cosplay club, and we have our own booth and there, and just to see the kids start off, and it might be shy, and then they build these 
amazing costumes to come out. It's great. Cool. Okay. So, people, if you're in the Hot Springs area, check out the Garland County Library. Uh, if you're not in the Hot Springs area, check out your local library. You might be surprised what you find. I love the library. So, all right. Well, Brent, thanks so much for being on, and congratulations on what definitely looks to be a successful uh, con. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, definitely. Take care, Brent. Man, nice talk to you. Okay. Um, so... Uh, just moving on, that was Brent from the Garland County Library, and this con is a little bit different in that it is a, uh, it's actually a put on by the City of Hot Springs and the Garland County Library. It, it's not a, a, you know, private venture or, or whatever, so, and they've done a, a bang-up job. Going to throw out a couple more show notes, and i got a, uh, another person or two I want to talk to here, and don't forget, Richard Hatch from both the original and the new Battlestar Galactica will be on around 1.30 for a live interview, so stay tuned for that. Uh, okay, so we've got a temporary station change coming up for Shane Play starting October 8th, so not next weekend, but the weekend after. Uh, it'll be for uh, uh, roughly six weeks due to football, but starting October 8th, we'll still be at Saturdays at 1, but we'll be on sister station 99.5, not 96.5 like we are normally. Uh, and then on Sundays, the show will rebroadcast on 96.5, our normal station, at 5 o'clock, but it'll be pre recorded. So just keep that in mind. And then, of course, if you listen by podcast, then, you know, or, or on Krypton Radio, that doesn't affect you. So I uh, also want to mention show sponsor, the comic book store in Little Rock and Collector's Edition in North Little Rock is having a 34th anniversary sale. Uh, that's how long they've been around. They got into the beginning of the comic book store thing. Uh, Monday, September 26th through Saturday, October 1st, get on over to Michael Tierney's stores. 25% off of graphic novels and back issues, and all 50-cent comics are 25 cents. This is at both locations. This will be Monday through Saturday, so Monday, September 26th through Saturday, October 1st, at the comic book store in Little Rock and Collector's Edition in North Little Rock. So uh, i got a couple other people here hanging out, wanting to say hi, so we're going to get them on real quick. Uh, Tony, real quick, buddy. Okay, so this is Tony. Tony's no stranger to the show. He's uh, the Steve Jackson Games rep for Arkansas. He's here uh, for the con, but also the RPG gaming. And he, and you're running GURPS today at three o'clock. So say hi to everybody, Tony. Good afternoon, Little Rock. Yeah, and 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 people on the podcast around the world, and people on the podcast around the world. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your game you're running at three o'clock. So I'm going to be running GURPS uh, at three p.m today a few hours it's going to be a chambara style game which is samurai movies so there's going to be a lot of katanas being swung and which makes me very very happy kimonos it's also going to be a murder mystery so if you guys can get down here in the next few hours you're more than welcome to jump in i believe there are a few spots left so yeah and gaming is free if you have a pass into SpaCon. Now, you have to get into SpaCon, but if you get into SpaCon, gaming is free on a first-come, first-served basis. And I'm running Numenera tomorrow at uh, noon. So, And uh, I'm, I'm getting in Tony's game today at 3. I'm really looking forward to it. So, And speaking of gaming, I've got – hey, thanks, Tony. Yeah. We'll see. You. I've got Jonathan Westmoreland standing by who coordinated all of the gaming. Remember, not only is this an inaugural con – but he's setting up all the RPG gaming and stuff and the gaming uh, for the first time at, at, at a new con. And he's done a bang-up job. There's a lot of people back there playing games and having a lot of fun. Jonathan, how are you? I am doing great, Shane. How are you? Uh, fantastic. And you're actually in the middle of running a Pathfinder game, right? Uh, Dungeons & Dragons. we got Pathfinder coming up at 3 o'clock, but right now it's D&D. &D. It's D&D. &D. And you were I, I, I crashed your game earlier because you were helping out a player, and I took over your game as the DM, and I had Tiamat and... A Tarasku and the Transformers and Voltron all show up at the same time, and the player had the players roll initiative. So that was a lot of fun. It was. All those first level players did a fantastic job fighting the gods and goddesses of the universe, and I think some of them survived. They might have. That was a lot of fun. So, it, you know, you can't leave a game unattended. Some sneaky DM will come along and, and take it over. So, anyway, so what, what games have you still got on the schedule for today and tomorrow? Well, this afternoon we've got a couple of sessions of Pathfinder as well as Tony Dutra running GURPS. I believe you just spoke to him. And then tomorrow morning, we've got another potpourri of games. We've
we've got Delta Green, we've got Monty Cook's New Manera, and uh, we also have Feng Shui 2 by Ross Watson. The Feng Shui 2 game is of particular interest because that game is blowing up hot springs and it's going to take place in hot springs with all the local landmarks. The actual game is going to be set in hot springs. Yes, yes. The players will even be martial artists fighting off the evil threat of someone attacking hot springs, Arkansas. Nice. Okay, well, it's, uh, it looks like everyone's having fun. I'm looking forward to r- running a new Manera tomorrow at noon, uh, and then I'm, I'm looking forward to playing GURPS today. But there's Pathfinder. Uh, you know, there's other games going on. And then, uh, if I remember right, they actually had sort of a preview version of Savage World's Rifts going on today, did they not? They do. It's actually going on right now. Uh, Ross Watson, one of the designers behind that game, is running a game. Um, it, it's it's a blend of Savage Worlds and the Rift universe, and they had a recent Kickstarter that was very successful, and I think this is one of the few games that have been played since then because the books still haven't been released. They're still coming in the pipe. Right. So, I mean, that's a, that's a, big, that's a big win for, for you to get that here, and I talked to the guy running it really nice. Talked to him about having him and uh, Pinnacle Games on the show down the road. So, well, Jonathan, thanks so much. I know you got your game to get back to. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much, I've been, and I'm pleased to be a sponsor of the RPG Gaming here at SpawCon. So, hello, sir. Right. Did you want to say hi? I saw you kind of hanging around, or were you just taking pictures? Oh, my name's Nathan. Hi. Hey, how's it going? So, what are you, what are you, what are you doing here, Nathan? Um, I, just, see, I see you have a vendor pass. I do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Almost knocked you out with a mic. Uh, I do, actually. We're over there at the uh, Anime R Us one, and we actually uh, are live streaming the entire event. On That's Twitch. cool. So, what is Anime R Us? Um, it's uh, through National Park, and it's just like the anime club. That's cool. You guys got some good stuff up. I'm up here out of Little Rock, but the National Park has an anime. Uh, yeah, and then the the library system or the library has a cosplay club. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Um, well, is it cool if I go ahead and plug the Twitch? Go for it. Um, it's going to be twitch.tv forward slash myrufu, M-A-I-R-U-F-U, and you can see everything that's going on in the expo room. Um, you know, it's really fun out here. Nice. Cool, man. Well, Nathan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What do you, what do you think of the con so far? I mean, this is really good for being an inaugural con. This is the first day of a new con. I'm actually liking it. I'm glad I'm part of it. Um, well, actually, the whole reason why I wanted to come over is I'm actually a radio DJ for 97.9. Oh, that's hip. That's cool. See what you're running because we're actually looking for an off-site little uh, thing. Well, I'll, I'll let you talk to the, the station people that the hooked up. I just use it. I didn't have any. But it's it's called, it's I don't know, Comrex. I don't know. Yeah, it's a thingy with blinking lights. There you go. Yeah, I got a, I got a couple of uh, other blinky things over there with lights. I got a, about six thousand dollars worth of computers over there. Nice man. Well, Nathan, it's nice talking to you. Nice talking have a good one. Yeah, have a good one. All right. So, uh, Zach, I'm going to read a, an ad actually real quick for uh, for uh, SpawCon, and then we're going to take a break. Uh, and then when we come back, uh, you know, about one thirty, we'll have that live interview with Richard Hatch of Battlestar Galactica. So meanwhile, in Hot Springs, SpaCon lands in the Spa City September 23rd through 25th at the Hot Springs Convention Center. Come out and celebrate your love of comics, science fiction, anime, cosplay, gaming, pop culture, and all things entertainment. SpaCon is a full-fledged comic convention complete with celebrity guests, Vendors selling their wares, comic book artists, panel discussions featuring special guests, cosplayers, and so much more. To find out more about SpawCon, including a full schedule of guests and events, or to purchase tickets, visit www.spa-con.org. And remember, uh, Shane Plays uh, has the pleasure of sponsoring all the gaming, uh, and that's happening in room 207 and 208 uh, today and tomorrow, role-playing games. Board games, video games, all kinds of cool stuff going in there. So come on out and check it out. Zach, go and take us to a break, big guy. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. 
If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. Mega Wars Darknet. The classic online space strategy game has returned. Bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition leading to the ultimate Battle of the Galaxy. Grab your slot today for the only online game where tactics and strategy still reign supreme. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available in our special pre-sales previews running now. Megawars.net The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie. And the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trollord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio. We are live on scene from, I'm being menaced by a stormtrooper even as we speak. I'm live on scene at SpaCon in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Hello, what's your designation, sir? TK-308-901. TK-3308-901? All right, well, how, how are you enjoying the con? Have you, have, you, uh, have you blasted anybody or done any disintegrations? Just a few. Just a few. I missed, I missed about seven. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, very, very glad to have you here, and your Stormtrooper armor looks fantastic. So we've got, uh, like I said, I'm on, I'm on site. I don't know if you could hear that but uh, the, through his mask, but uh, fantastic Stormtrooper armor um, here, here at SpaCon in Hot Springs, Arkansas. He's only disintegrated about seven people today. So, uh, And I, I'm, I don't know if he's with the 501st or not. I know there's the 501st is a costuming, Star Wars costuming organization here in uh, – Arkansas, that's uh, bad guys doing good, and and they do excellent charity work uh, with Star Wars costuming. I see Richard Hatch milling around. I'm not sure how soon he'll be on, but he will be on momentarily. Wanted to talk a little bit more about the cool stuff that's going on here. And and uh, Zach, uh, I know over the break we were talking a little a little bit about the uh, my voice on the mic with this remote unit, and just kind of let me know how it's sounding to you when you get a chance. Want to make sure uh, this sounded good to the folks, but. Um, yeah, we're we're live at SpaCon, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh, lots of super cool stuff going on here. I, I I got my picture taken in the DeLorean car. I actually got to set in the DeLorean from Back to the Future. That was an amazing, like almost mystical experience. Just really cool. A lot of fun. Uh, we're set up so neat. Seeing all those lights. My son climbed in there with me. There's the uh, truck from Dumb and Dumber. Uh, and there's there's all kinds of vendors, cosplay panels. Nichelle Nichols is here. You heard her from Star Trek having her. Uh, uh, there's a line of people waiting to get their picture taken with her. We got Michael Hogan and Richard Hatch from Battlestar Galactica. A lot of Rodney Ramos, uh, comic artists, is here. There's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of really really cool stuff. Uh, and to mention, like I said, the games and and all of that that's going on. Uh, very very successful. I'm I'm very pleased. With what I'm seeing here, and, and that the con um, scene in Arkansas continues to grow. You know, we've got River City Comic Expo, of course, that happens um, over the summer, and now it looks like we're going to have Spa Con and Hot Springs, and uh, things are just looking fantastic. So, um, uh, just other than that, uh, like I said, really, really, really happy with what I'm seeing here. So, if you are in Little Rock or in Arkansas or whatever, you're hearing this and you're, you know, you don't know if you wanted to come or not, uh, and, and you're on the fence or you didn't know about it, I would definitely come. It's in the Hot Springs Convention Center, uh, right here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's today and tomorrow. 
I think today is like 10 to 6, and tomorrow is like 11 to 4, I think is what the hours are. But you can go to spa, S-P-A dash con, C-O-N dot org, uh, you know, to learn more. So I was talking to Zach. Zach, are you there? You going to talk? Of course. All right. You went and saw The Magnificent Seven. It was a great movie. Okay. You liked The Magnificent Seven. Yep. So, and I asked you, and uh, this is the one, this has got what? The guy from... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's, does it have Denzel Washington in it? Well, Chris Pratt, Denzel Washington, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, the guy who plays Kingpin and Daredevil, and oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, that's actually Deanna Frio. But yeah, I, would, I, I didn't know how to. I only know name. that because I've heard it said. Yeah, I only yeah. know that because I've heard it said. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, is it just kind of a dumb action movie, or like what kind of movie is it? Uh, it's um, I mean, it has a lot of um, great funny lines, comedy. Um, action um pretty much um that's pretty much what it is it's you're gonna have a great time to with your family or whoever you take with you have a great time laughing love the action um jokes is it's just i don't know it's a great time it's a great movie all right and i asked you you didn't know i imagine a lot of my listeners know but you didn't know that that's actually the magnificent seven is a remake of an older western that had yule brenner in it yeah and that's actually a remake of a samurai movie mm-hmm. uh, called The Seven Samurai. Right. And uh, it kind of tells the story of seven people uh, standing against odds that there's no way to win against to, like, try to save a town. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's a great, great plot. Uh, you know, Seven Samurai was great. The original Magnificent Seven was good. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one. I think it'll be really cool. Are so. You? Anyway, yeah, I'm seeing. I'm trying to grab some people as they come by. Yeah, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of great cosplay going on here. Kind of look around to see what I'm seeing. I, I see, of course, Deadpool. Uh, I've seen, uh, you know, plenty of stormtroopers. Um, see a lot of like kind of anime cosplay that I. It's like I can't identify exactly who those characters are. I see a little baby dressed up as Superman. I see Darth Vader. Uh, trying to think. See, I mean, there's a lot of really, really, really good cosplay here. I've been really impressed. And there's stuff downstairs for kids. Uh, there's a uh, a Lego table. Uh-huh. Uh, the kids can play Lego. And then there's uh, there's there's a table set up that has this huge, like, train on it. Uh, wait a minute. I've got Doctor Who coming by. Hold on a second. I'm going to grab Doctor Who. Geek heaven, I guess. I, I'm going to try to grab Doctor Who if I can grab him. Up. Ah. You got it. Oh, I got a Kylo Ren just walked by. And I saw this guy earlier. I'm going to try to grab him. He's got a good... Sir. Excuse me, sir. Hey, I, I'm uh, Shane Sachs with Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio. We're live on the air right now on 96.5 FM out of Little Rock, Arkansas. I saw you earlier. I love your uh, next generation. Uh, where, where Did you make that? Where did you get that? I ordered it online. Yeah, so I. this is a really dumb question, but I take it you're a Star Trek fan? Uh, big Star Trek fan. Yeah, so what's your rank here? Let me see. Is that Captain? First officer. Your first officer? Okay, so are you a Riker man? You want to hear my you want to hear my favorite Star Trek joke? You have to laugh even if you think it's not funny. How come when Picard says fire at will, no one blasts Riker? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for laughing. <laughs> I told that joke a couple of weeks ago and my producer just made like kind of a like a, a gagging noise. So what do you think of SpawCon? Are you enjoying it? Uh, do you think they've done a good job with it? Yeah, it, it seems to be a great event. Yeah. Now, did, I saw you in line earlier waiting for Nichelle Nichols. Did you get to meet her? Yeah, I just met her and got my picture taken with her. I've heard she's super nice. Is that true? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that uh, you were able to come. Thanks so much for saying hi to my listeners. And I really do like uh, I, I, the uniforms of the next generation. I like them a lot. And that one looks really good. So, yeah, you're welcome. Have a, have a, Enjoy the rest of the con. So and he was in, you know, I know it's Theater of the Mind on the radio, but he was in uh, a, basically, you know, the Rikers uniform from uh, the Next Generation, and it was it looked really good. I was I was really impressed with it. So, uh, of course, I got Captain America's. I got Deadpool. I've, I've seen multiple Deadpools. I've got a. This is kind of a, a different one. I've got a Joker walking around uh, with a canine from Doctor Who. I don't I don't know how you combine those two, but I guess this is the generation of the mashups. So. I guess it works. Um, they've also got, I was mentioning earlier, they've got uh, areas here for kids. And uh, downstairs, when you first come in to register, there's all kinds of stuff downstairs for kids to play on. Uh, big, huge model train set up, a table full of Legos to play up, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. And then up here in the main vendor's hall, 
they have um, now. Hold on, hold on. I get, sir. I am Shane Stacks. Uh, Shane plays Geek Talk Radio. I'm live on the air right now, 96.5 FM, out of Little Rock. Tell my listeners what you're cosplaying at. So I'm the sole survivor from Fallout 4. Yeah, I, I could tell that. But uh, now this Pip Boy, did you make that, or was that one of the ones that came with so the? It's 3D printed, and then it has my phone in it. And so I painted and assembled and wired it. That that looks really good. Uh, Oh yeah, so you actually have your phone in there with the Pit Boy software running on it. So what are, what are you thinking about SpaCon? Are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. I think it's really nice con for a, a first time convention. That fan, that's my thoughts exactly. So now, are you from Hot Springs? Did you come up from somewhere else? I grew up around Hot Springs. I live up in Northwest Arkansas, so I made about a four hour trip to come to this thing. Wow, that's pretty hardcore. So, well, your your Fallout costume looks great. Uh, have you played all the way through Fallout Four? Uh, I have to confess, I've only about six hours in. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've played about six, seven, eight hours of it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm 800 hours in Fallout 3. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're hardcore, man. Well, I'm going to fist bump you for that one. Thanks so much for coming on the air, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the con. So, um, hey, Zach, well, I think what we're going to do while we're waiting on Richard Hatch, I see him right now getting set up. Uh, I think we'll, let's, let's uh, cut to another break. I'm going to throw some love at uh, Game Goblins. And also, I want to mention, uh, you know, we had Stephanie Straw from the show on, or on the show last week talking about escape rooms, and Central Arkansas Escape Rooms is here with a free 15-minute escape room that you can do. So uh, if you're coming to the con, make sure to check that out. But I'm going to throw some love at uh, Shane Play or at Game Goblins. We'll take a break, and then hopefully we'll get Richard Hatch on here. I see him, I see him floating around even as we speak. So... Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Uh, Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone, this is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. Mega Wars Darknet. The classic online space strategy game has returned, bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition leading to the ultimate Battle of the Galaxy. Grab your slot today for the only online game where tactics and strategy still reign supreme. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available in our special pre-sales previews running now. Megawars.net The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. 
All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. 12 years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game Game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of Castles and Crusades today. Shame Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Hey, we're back with Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, uh, live from SpaCon at, uh, at Hot Springs, Arkansas, at the inaugural SpaCon, doing great. Uh, about to talk to Richard Hatch uh, of Battlestar Galactica fame. Uh, he said he, his, his agent was kind enough to uh, say that he could uh, you know, come on the radio show today, so we're waiting to make that happen. Uh, you know, if people don't know, he was on the original Battlestar Galactica as uh, Commander Apollo, uh, and then he was uh, in the in the reboot. Uh, he was uh, Apollo was played by Jamie Bamber, and he did a very great job. But, but Richard Hatch is my Apollo. Uh, and of course, when they did the reboot, Richard Hatch was on the show as Tom Zarek, who was a uh, sort of a criminal turned politician, and he, and he did a great job in that as well. So, really, really looking forward uh, to talking with him. He's signing a book right now. Very pleasant. I'll tell you one thing. I want to brag on Michael Hogan is here. Uh, you know, he played Colonel Ty in uh, Battlestar Galactica, and he's like the nice. I told him he's he's too nice to be a con guest. Here he comes right now. Mr. Hogan, how are you doing? Uh, uh, too nice. What the frack do you mean by that? <laughs> well, now he's going to character. Uh, you <laughs> I'm right here. Yeah. Oh, live radio. I just, Zach tried to catch that. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you in the break? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he's trying. So he, he's been so nice. The minute he gets on the radio, he goes into character as Colonel Ty. Well, uh, uh, hey, uh, hello, everybody. Welcome aboard. And apparently this guy and I are going to get together and have a lengthy chat at some point or other. He's going to hook me up. Uh, yeah, Mr. Hogan has been kind enough to put me in touch with his agent, and Mr. Hogan, Colonel Ty himself, will be a guest on Shane Plays Radio in the future. So, uh, and, and, and I appreciate that very much. What have you? Are you having fun at the con? Yeah, I certainly am. Uh, uh, I got in here last night, and people say, "How do you like Little Rock?" Well, it looks like in a lot of other cities because all I see is the roof of a convention center. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's almost like if you're so yeah, that's all I've seen so far. Yeah, if you're a musician, all you see is the crowd. And and they tape the name of the, the city. Yeah, hello Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are you you honestly are a darn nice guy, and uh, you you just I've just watched people interact with you, and you know I'm really glad to, to get to get to meet you, and I can tell people enjoy talking to you. Well, I love it. I love these things. I mean, I'm a real uh, uh, fan of the fans. I mean, they're they're what keeps us all going here, man. Like in there. It's like a sci-fi fans, a, a horror fans, et cetera, et cetera. It's all like we're like a big extended family. Yeah. It's like a theater troupe that we are. So it's easy to hang out and be together. It's like a family, so I'm comfortable. So um, we'll talk. Yeah, well, now, you, I wanted to say real quick, you told me when we were talking uh, before the show, how many years were you in acting before you got into Battlestar Galactica? Well, it was 37 years before Battlestar Galactica. Actually, my wife plays uh, Doyle Franks, the judge that says not guilty to, battle, to uh, Baltar in the show. I didn't know that. We met at the National Theatre School of Canada 104 years ago, uh, and we hooked up, and uh, we've been together ever since, so... Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Hogan, thank you so much. I look forward to having you on the show in the future. Right back at you, man. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So I'm going to try to say hi to Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch, are you still good to do a radio interview? I was told that uh, that was pretty. Well, listen, first of all, welcome to Hot Springs. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Yeah, you look great. Uh, I got. I told you a while ago when you were walking by, you, sir, are my Apollo. Oh, my God. Well, you know, my thought of it is, is that. You know, there's many ways to play every character, and I'm I loved what Jamie did with his uh, version of Apollo. Um, I certainly was a little jealous of some of the wonderful scenes he got to play, and the new Battlestar. I was always hungry in the original. I always wanted something a little more provocative, edgy to grab onto, um, but I did love the original. The 
mythology, the backstory, and all the actors was a great group of people. So, but I love both shows for different reasons. But I would have to say the new show is probably the best written, best acted, best produced sci-fi show I think in history on television. Well, they said at one time they said it's whether you're sci-fi or not, it's the best show on television. Period. And I, I would agree that uh -huh. it was a fantastic show. Right. It's awful gracious. I, I have I liked Jamie Bamber as Apollo. Don't get me wrong, but you're my Apollo, sir. Okay. So uh, now, and by the way, my name is Shane Stacks. I'm with Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, live uh, out of 96.5 on in in Arkan or out of Little Rock, Arkansas. I appreciate your time. This, this I'm geeking and fanboying right now, talking oh, to you boy. and Mr. Hogan. I want you to know that. Oh. Now I, I did a little research over. The past few days do you still do your actors clinic that i saw on your website i teach at colleges universities high schools um and most conventions i go to i do an acting seminar or some kind of uh, everything you ever wanted to know about acting in the current entertainment industry i um you know i teach the business of the art as well i also teach the business and art of life helping people to leverage their talents into the marketplace in a more successful way we never learn those things in school and I had to learn it the hard way. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that, that really stands out for me, uh, for you, sir, is you, you're not just an actor. You're a fan like the fans. I mean, you put your, your blood, sweat, tears, body, and soul into Battlestar Galactica, uh, and that, that really impresses me. So, I mean, you know, you're not just showing up for the paycheck. I mean, you're, you're, you're a fan in the same sense that a lot of people here are. I'm a fan of great art, great storytelling. Um, it's not just sci-fi. I love great storytelling in whatever genre it happens to be. I, great music, great performances, great dance. I love great art. So Battlestar is a phenomenal story that I always thought was never ever fully appreciated. And it seems like whenever you have a deeper, more visionary sci-fi show, they don't last very long. That's true, uh, because Battlestar was more than just it was more than just space opera. There was almost a theological uh, kind of underpinnings. It was almost, in some ways, the Exodus. You know, I'm not trying to make it uh, distinctly Jewish or Christian, but there was a there was almost a deeper significance to what was going on. So I, I also loved your turn as it was a Commander Karn or Karg in Exodus. Okay, yeah, I have trailers here with me if I get a chance to play them. Um, I love Star Trek. I watched it as a young actor in New York. The original Trek. And I got into Next Gen, and I've watched a little bit of all the other Trek movies. But I love all the Trek movies. Um, I love that universe, and uh, to be able to play this amazing Klingon general in this groundbreaking Trek indie film that has caused so much controversy and obviously a a lawsuit with uh, Paramount CBS to redefine what fan fiction is and fan films are, and I think to maybe hopefully find a win-win solution to this so that everybody can participate in this uh, world that they love and uh, find a way to, to um, get along with each other. Well, I, I've had Alec Peters on the show. I'm a champion of fan films. Uh, I don't want to get into the legal aspects. I feel that fan films should be doable in some way. I, I don't think that they're, they should be illegal or whatever. Uh, I enjoyed Axanar. Uh, you're, you know, you playing the King on Commander was fantastic. Uh, have you, and I know you can't speak to the legal issues, but you know, have as, as far as you know, if all that clears up, are y'all moving forward? Have, yeah. do you, I mean, if they can resolve this and they're going to take it all the way, they're going to, they're going to take it all the way to the trial and they're going to help force Paramount CBS to, uh, to, you know, open their records and look at what they have and what they don't have and find out. Um, a way to, I think, resolve this issue so that fan films can continue. I'm with you. I, I, I especially Star Trek. It, Star Trek would not be Star Trek without the fans. So we've got. Uh, I know that you know you're here. One, there's other people wanting to meet you. Got one last question for you. Yeah, go ahead. You know, studios have to protect their IP, but I think there's a way to work out with fan films that have gotten so much more sophisticated and so much more professional to work out some kind of profit sharing, some kind of licensing deal, some kind of way that these fan films can go be delivered to the public and not, you know, get in the way of any of the studio productions and maybe even help stimulate the fan interest and get them even more excited for what the studios do. I, don't, I think it's a, there's a win-win possible here. Well, I, I agree with you. I think that uh, the current guidelines that have been proposed 
which are not laws, they're just guidelines, are draconian in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, I, do you want to kind of share with people what you're going to be doing at the con this weekend, you know, if, if for uh, how they can find you and whatnot? I'm going to talk about the my life and career in the entertainment industry and how the entertainment industry has changed, what we actors go through, um, how movies are made, how movies are funded. I'm going to talk about just about everything. Um, plus, I, I do want to mention that I'm in two new projects. One is called Diminuendo, which is a wonderful um, character-driven sci-fi movie uh, with Leah Carnes from the new Battlestar and Gigi Edgeley from Farscape and Coy Dykstra, John Dykstra's daughter. It's a wonderfully wonderful um, uh, story about an AI uh, coming back to haunt a man who thought he lost the love of his life. Um, and the other one is Personal Space, which I'm doing with Nikki Klein and Tam O'Pinniket from the new Battlestar, which is about a 1,200-year-old journey of a starship, a ship coming from Earth in 1991 when Reagan talked about space. And they've got rotating crews that have 25 years to work, and then they go to sleep in cryo, based on real cryo. And it's all about logistics, surviving in space, getting along with each other, and it's a very character-driven thing, space adventure. Well, I want to see both. Uh, do you have? Do you know when these may make it to fans' eager eyeballs? Well, um, uh, Personal Space will be coming out soon. It's going to be a web series um, and high-end web series, I must say. And then Diminuendo should be coming to film festivals and coming out in the next three to four months. All right. Well, thank you. And I also saw you did some stuff with Walter Koenig. Was it like a steampunk, steampunk almost? Uh? We were both in um, Cowboys and Engines with Malcolm McDowell, which is a steampunk pilot. And, and um, Walter's also in uh, Diminuendo. Well, I, I love it. Thank you so much for your time. This has been a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richard Hatch, uh, Apollo himself, among many other things, come check him out at SpaCon in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Thank you, Mr. Hatch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And, uh, Zach, I think we got, that'll put us, let's see how much time we got left here. Uh, what, what, what time uh, count are we out there, Zach? 152. 152. So we got five minutes. Uh, that was a real pleasure, folks, to talk to both uh, Michael Hogan and Richard Hatch of Battlestar Galactica fame. Uh, you know, sometimes doing this show, I get to scratch my inner fanboy, and that was definitely one of those times. And we will have Mr. Hogan on the show down the road. Uh, Miss Harley Quinn, would you like to say hello to my listeners? I'm live on the air, 96.5 FM, Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio. Hello, Harley. Hi. Have you done anything crazy or killed anybody yet? Uh, not yet, no. All right, so what did you th I see that you're in a more classic Harley outfit, even though you put your own spin on it. What did you think of the Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad movie? It was very different than the original Harley Quinn. Wow, that's a nice diplomatic answer of you. I liked them both, uh, but, I mean, the original Harley, you know, obviously I'm more of a fan. Are you enjoying the con? Yes. What's been your favorite thing so far? Uh, just looking at everything and all of the artists and on their work. Are you going to participate in any of the cosplay panels or the cosplay party tonight or any of that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thanks so much for saying hi. Would you like to say hi, too? No? No, she doesn't want to. Okay. Well, y'all take care. Thanks so much for saying hi to my listeners. So, yeah, lots of cosplay going on here. Lots of people having fun. Um, what to share next week. Uh, well, actually, no, not next week. Uh, on October 8th. I'm going to have uh, Don Wilkins with a new sci-fi RPG uh, called Stellar Tactics, computer role-playing game. Next week was supposed to be Dave Oshry talking about the Dusk game, uh, but uh, that he's going to have to reschedule, so he's probably not going to come on until sometime in November. And that guy's a nut, if, you, if, you're, if, you don't, if you're not familiar um, with Dave Oshry. But again, folks, get on down here to Hot Springs, Spa-Con dot org spa dash con dot org uh randy randy duncan you want to say hi to did your did your panel end yeah, your panel? Panel. all right folks this is randy duncan he's a he teaches comics the comic book professor um he's been on the show before i didn't think i was going to get to see him say hi he had a panel but he just walked by how did your panel go oh it went pretty well i think it was on uh, icons of the american comic book and uh a book we did back in 2012 and i was asking him questions about who would you have put in if you had to choose between uh, Quicksilver and the Flash, or Batgirl and Supergirl. So we had a lot of was, all that. Were there any fist fights? Uh, not too much. Uh, uh, we had uh, we put one member of the Fantastic Four in for an entry, and we had a little bit of contention between should it be the Thing or Mister Fantastic. 
Oh, that's hard. The crowd Mr. Fantastic wasn't really that fantastic, so we went the ever-loving blue-eyed thing. Oh, wow. I, I don't know. Because that's hard because you can't have I, – the thing can stand on his own. But Mr. Fantastic can't really – he is more Fantastic Four than the thing, in my opinion. But I don't know if y'all went that deep into it. guy in the Marvel Universe. But, you know, the Marvel Universe has so many geniuses that, you know, but uh, – Well, did anybody suggest Aunt Petunia? No, they didn't. <laughs> we didn't get into uh, Aunt Petunia or Aunt May. Wow. I, wow. I, I did have um, Lois Lane or uh, Mary Jane Watson. Hmm. Well, you got to go Lois Lane just because of the history of the character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, hey, I'm getting my music to wrap the show. Randy, right. yeah. good to see you again. Uh, and, and real quick, what, are, are you enjoying SpawCon? You think they're doing a good job with it? Yeah, no, it's been great so far. Yeah, I'm traffic at my table, so yeah. great. Yeah, I've seen a lot of foot traffic. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get us out of here. Uh, we've got Zach. What's what's the count? We got about a minute and a half. Over a minute. Over a minute. And folks, I know usually you don't hear me asking Zach for, but I'm not in the studio, so I'm trying to time things without my normal equipment and stuff in front of me. Thanks so much for listening to Shane Plays Radio, whether you listen to it live or you're listening to it uh, pre-recorded on the podcast or on. Um, Krypton Radio. Had a great time here today. The con scene in Arkansas is definitely getting better. Check us next time, next week, Saturday, uh, 1 p.m., for Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. It's a great time to be a geek. Zach, thanks for all your help back in the studio, and I'll see you in person next week, sir. There are those who believe that life here began out there, far across the universe, with tribes of humans who may have been the forefathers of the Egyptians, or the Toltecs, or the Mayans. Some believe that there may yet be brothers of man who even now fight to survive somewhere beyond the heavens. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual? For as little as $1 an episode, simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays.